Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime. And in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. Somebody may have seen a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene, or simply overheard somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. On tonight's episode, we'll take a look at the case of 19-year-old Samir Barakat. On August 5th, 2012, Samir Barakat, a 19-year-old recent graduate of Roosevelt High School, where he was a member of the football team, ran track, and also wrestled, was walking in the early morning hours with his dad and his younger brother when a lone gunman approached and fired several shots at the group, one of those shots striking Samir in the head and killing him. Here's his story. Samir's life started, you know, as a sick baby as he was born. A day they said that he won't live, and another day they said, yeah, he'll make it for two months, and then he made it, he survived that. He lived all his life after that happy. He never cried, he never was upset. As he grew up, to everybody he was an angel. He loved everybody, everybody loved him. Samir was always the laid back type of guy. He really didn't let things bother him but he knew when to have fun and when to be serious at the same time. If he sees you upset or angry or mad at somebody or at the world or anything, he will get a laugh out of you. He will make you smile. That's his job, basically. That's what he believed that everybody has to smile. Everyone loved him. He's caring, kind. He'll look out for you. Even if you ask him not to, he'll still do it regardless of what you say. Samir basically was a jokester. At the same time, he wanted to do wrestling and football. In wrestling, he became a champion. He brought a lot of trophies to Roosevelt High School. He was persistent on becoming an undefeated wrestler, so he did. Million dollar smile that every person on earth would like this smile, you know. The proudest, I will say, the proudest moment in my life, his graduation day. We shaking hands and I'm telling him, you the man, and he said, no, you the man. A day or two before the graduation, he decided that he wanted to become a pediatrician. So we set him up with the college and everything. He's, he was supposed to do two years in Wright College and after that goes to Purdue. Two weeks before he was murdered, he was basically like saying his goodbyes. You know, he hugging everybody in the house. He's telling, you know, telling his subless, you know, to be good and to do this, to do that. On August 5th, 2012, 19-year-old Samir Barakat waited for his dad to get home from working the late shift. He woke up late at night, you know, as I get off of work, father, kids, night out. And that's what we did. Then Samir, his dad, and Samir's younger brother, Sammy, who was 16, decided to take a walk together. They normally took walks as a time to bond, tell jokes, just a little family time. This was on August 5th, in the middle of the holy month of Ramadan, so it was now in the early morning hours when they decided to do this. We went to the prayer, we went to the pool hall, we went to the coffee shop. Again, conversing, enjoying some family time. Decided to walk back to their house about 2.30 in the morning. It's time for us to go home because it was during Ramadan. That's the time, basically, we really have to start eating so we can prepare for fasting. Kind of the way Samir's dad was, he wanted to take the long way. You know, he liked this time together, this bonding time with his sons. So they decided to walk behind their house down the alley with the 4900 block of Whipple. So as we approached the house, 
about 25 feet away from the back door. That's when a murderer came out. A unknown gunman just appeared at the entrance to the alley, basically the tip of the alley. He was 45 to 60 feet away from us and asked us basically certain questions or gang related. He yelled at the, the group, hey, what gang are you in? If you're not part of the Latin Kings, you need to get out of here. Samir's dad said, you know, we're not in any gang. And the gunman pulled out his weapon and he started to fire shots at the group. He shot five times. As soon as he started shooting, I threw my little son, Sammy, to the ground. Samir's dad threw Sammy to the ground to protect him, and then Samir's dad grabbed Samir like in a bear hug almost. And I took Samir, put him in front of me to protect him, pulled it went over my head and hit him in the back of his head. My younger brother came running up to me and saying Samir been shot. I was like, stop lying, it's not funny. That It's not funny, don't joke about stuff like that. He's like, I'm not joking. My dad's holding him, and all you see is a, a puddle of blood just around them. I was scared. I was like, I don't want to lose my brother. Samir was rushed to Advocate Medical Center. Seven hours later, he passed away. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. On August 5th, 2012, 19-year-old Samir, his dad, and Samir's younger brother, Sammy, who was 16, decided to take a walk together. When they got about 25 feet from their house, a unknown gunman just appeared at the entrance to the alley, and he started to fire shots at the group. Unfortunately, one of the shots went over the father's head and struck Samir in his head. Samir was rushed to Advocate Medical Center, but unfortunately died from his injuries. As much as I talk about it, as if I keep remembering, it does not hurt as much as when I remember all the happiness, that all, all, all the good times we had together, you know. That's what I miss of Samir, you know. I miss him just bonded. I mean, he was at the age of 19, he was more than a son to me. He was my friend, he was also my brother. And he was like that with everybody, with mom, with his sister, with his other three brothers. Everything just fell apart. It was like he was holding up a part of us. And when he was gone, it was like, that was it. The other day on April 10th was my son's birthday. Get the cake, happy birthday is over with, that's it. There is no celebration anymore. There is no happy days anymore, you know? When Samir was shot, he wasn't the only one that got killed. Piece of my heart, piece of his mom's heart, piece of his sister's heart. Everybody got that little piece in his heart that was killed along with Samir. I just sit around there and think about my brother Samir. It's like, what else can I do? I couldn't do anything about it. He did not want to fight. He did not want a problem, you know, like start something. He just wanted to kill for no reason. Right now, today, my 19-year-old son, the one that was 16, he's 19 now. Dad, can I go over my friend's house? The answer is always no. Are you gonna be out after dark? Then the answer is no. He took that freedom from us. Took the freedom from a mother and a father that cannot sleep at night anymore. The police have very little to go on. All they know is that there was a lone gun shooter who referenced a Latin King gang affiliation. There were five gunshots. This happened between 2.30 and 3 o'clock in the morning on August 5th, 2012. I would love to see justice is done. I want to see him in court. I don't want him roaming the streets free, you know, happy with his life or whatever he's doing while my son is in a casket under the ground. So if there's anybody out there who saw somebody running from the scene, who heard the gunshots, who might have heard somebody talking about the shooting, 
heard the Latin Kings talking about something or anything, please call the Chicago Police Department and ask for Detective Tedeschi at Area North at 312-744-8261. Just give us some information so we can find this guy. What hurt me the most is the following year when she's saying it's my brother's birthday and it's the memory that we lost the man. All I can do is just look at her and say, we're going to be okay. But are we going to be okay? Um, I don't know. But we have to live this life. Sooner or later, justice will be done. Whether on this earth or in the hereafter, justice will be done. We need to bring justice to Samir Barakat and his family. The cases you just watched remain unsolved, and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any other cases, please give our detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods a safer place.